Continuing our topic of structure activity relationships of antihistamines, we will now focus on the major skeleton of antihistaminics. What are the different groups that are required for uh, antihistaminic activity? Whether those groups are essential, non-essential? What are the different types of antihistaminics? Uh, let's have a look at the different types of antihistamines and the basic skeleton required to produce antihistaminic activity. So typically, uh, this is the skeleton of antihistaminics where you have an atom X to which two aryl groups are attached. You have a spacer atom of some few carbons and you have a terminal amino group to which alkyl groups are attached. X could be oxygen, carbon or nitrogen and the spacer atom would have two to three carbons. Now let's concentrate what could be the different antihistamines depending upon the lipophilic aromatic activity. Uh, generally, the CH2N that could be observed here is generally an ethyl group. Uh, if the X atom is nitrogen and you have an ethyl group along with the terminal nitrogen containing the alkyl groups, then it falls into the class of diamine papyracins. If you the X atom is oxygen and uh, you have an ethyl group and the terminal amino group will uh, attach to alkyl groups, uh, then you can say that it is amino ethers uh, class. And the if you have carbon, your X is carbon and you have an ethyl group and your terminal amino group with uh, al alkyl groups attached to it, then they belong to the class of propyl amine papyridins and tricyclics. Uh, let us now focus on SAR. Uh, the H1 antagonists are briefly categorized into two broad groups, the first generation and the second generation antihistaminics. The second generations are more advanced antihistamines. They have a greater property of being non-sedating. Also, they are not associated with any kind of cholinergic activity. So this SCR is for the first generation agents and of course, as we advance, then it will also go for the second generation agents. The basic requirements for any compound to show antihistaminic activities are as follows. Uh, you have two aryl group of which are AR. What is AR is either phenyl or substituted phenyl or heteroaryl groups such as 2 pyridyl And the second aryl group is AR dash, also called as the secondary aryl group or it is aryl methyl group. Then you have an X. X is a connecting atom of oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen, as was already specified by me. And then you have a spacer group. CH2N is generally an ethyl group. Now, NRRR dash, as I had already explained, is a basic terminal amine function. Now, the diaryl substitution is present in both the first and the second generation. And this diaryl group is essential for activity. That means if you remove one aryl group from the above skeleton, then it will lead to decrease in activity or loss of activity. It has been suggested that these groups, they should be non coplanar to each other so that they have optimal interaction with the H1 receptor. Uh, they can be anything from phenothiazins to dibenzocycloheptines and most of the substituents have aryl rings and these influence the antihistaminic activity. I had already given an overview of H1 receptor antagonists. Let's concentrate on the classification of H1 receptor antagonists. They are of the following class. Uh, Amino ethers, also called as the ethanol amines, ethylene diamines, propyl amines, particularly chlorpheniramine malleate, piperazines, cetrazine hydrochloride, tricyclics, loratidine, uh, piperidines, mislostatin, and we have also miscellaneous types of antihistaminics. Amino ethers, the examples could be phenidramine, diphenidramine, uh, and so on and so forth. Let's concentrate on amino ethers or ethanol amines. Now, if AR, AR dash, as can be seen in the structure below, replaces ARCH2AR dash and moiety, 
in ethyl amines, then what you get is amino ethers. The first tradition of H1 receptor antagonists display uh, more of the apparent analgesic anticholinergic effects. As I had already told that the second generations have non-sedating effects and there is no uh, anticholinergic effect associated with uh, the second generation antihistaminics. So, but the first generation antihistaminics, they display analgesic anticholinergic effects. Along with that, they usually show side reactions such as somnolence, dizziness, oral dryness, and the, but the incidence of gastrointestinal reaction is low. Some of the drugs can actually be used in the opposite direction for treatment of insomnia. For those amino ethers with two aromatic groups, the activity of S isomer is usually higher than the R isomers. These are the uh, characteristics of amino alkyl ether, which are characterized by presence of CHO moiety X and which is two to three carbon and common compounds are NN dimethyl ethanol amine. First compound is diphenyl hydramine. This is the example of diphenyl hydrochloride where this amino alkyl ethers are optically active due to asymmetric Substituted benzylic carbon, the triaryl tertiary amino alkyl group is the pharmacophore. This is the pharmacophore, and this is basically uh, showing activity that is a muscarinic activity because it binds to the muscarinic. Continuing our topic of structure activity relationships of antihistamines, we will now focus on the major skeleton of antihistaminics. What are the different groups that are required for uh, antihistamines?